watching the Word of Truth TV broadcast. The Word of Truth TV broadcast is one of the longest continuously running religious programs in the world. The very first Word of Truth TV broadcast aired in July of 1977. Since that time, the program has been on the air every week. What started out as a very meager effort has spread to the point that this broadcast has literally been seen around the world. Would you sit back with us for the next hour and let's worship together. This is the Word of Truth TV broadcast. This broadcast originates live from 1282 North Main Street in Marion, Ohio. You're welcome to be a part of the service. Come on out and be with us. years ago that on a Sunday morning something happened the world had been in darkness but just before sunrise something happened today we're going to talk about the th what happened Almost 2,000 years ago, a little over 2,000 years ago, a little over 2,000 years ago, Jesus had been crucified, put in a tomb. The Romans had put a guard there, and the seal of Rome was on that tomb, that no one was to go into that tomb. Early in the morning when it was dark. I like our dark scene right now. When it was dark, the women were thinking, we want to go down and anoint the body of Jesus. 
and they were getting ready and they headed out into the dark. We're going now back to our singers. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that morning in a few minutes. Go ahead. Page 139. Here's us me you see four o'clock in the morning how do I know it was four o'clock in the morning I know what the women were going to do their plans were to anoint the body of Jesus and under Jewish law they could only take care of that body up to the third day and at sunrise it was going to be the third day. And so they had made preparations when Jesus was crucified to buy the supplies to anoint his body. And then they had to rest on the Sabbath day. And there was more than one Sabbath day in that week. The first day that they could, the last chance, they could anoint the body of Jesus was before sunrise. So they, they had all their supplies. They had everything ready. And the women get, uh, gathered that morning to go down there. I wonder which of them asked the other ones, who's going to roll that stone away? Wait a minute, that stone, wait a minute. What about that stone? There was a stone there. 
And they had asked Pilate to make sure that tomb, that nobody could go in there and steal the body of Jesus. Pilate said, you have a guard. Make it as sure as you can. I think Pilate was starting to believe a little bit. He said, make it as sure as you can. And the, uh, he gave them probably four soldiers to stand guard duty 24 hours a day. Anybody that would try to get into that tomb would die. If, even though it was a dead body in there, if that dead body was stolen from that tomb, the soldiers would die. There was a seal upon the tomb. And on that seal, it showed that all of the power of Rome was available to keep that stone from rolling away. So I wonder, I wonder what the women were saying to each other as they go down there about four o'clock in the morning when it's so dark, look at the stars out. It's so dark out there. And they're heading down to the tomb. And they said, who's gonna roll that stone? I don't know. How are we gonna get around the guards? I don't know. What are we going to do? I don't know. But they were going down to the tomb. Let's go back to singers and I'll be back in a minute. Page 305. I love 
Watch the women as they come closer to the tomb. They're scared. They're really wanting to anoint the body of Jesus. And they don't know how any of this is going to come to pass. But they're on their way, hoping that God will make a way so that they can accomplish this. Now let's look at the soldiers. They have been guarding this tomb. And it's almost sunrise. Almost sunrise. Let's look inside the tomb. And there is the body of Jesus in the bloody clo uh, grave clothes and about 100 pounds of spices. But the body is laying in the same place that it's been since he was crucified and taken down there. Nothing has disturbed that body, but this is about to change. We are coming down almost to the sunrise. It's still dark, but the sun is about the sun is about to rise. Amen. The natural sun, but more important than anything else, the Son of God is about to arise. Now let's look at it. Here we go. Here we go. Stay with me just a minute. Stay with me. Something happened. In one two thousandth of a second, that body was in, so that was in the grave clothes. It's no longer there. What happened? He came out of there. He arose. What did he do? He arose. How do you get? They got 15 yards of linen that they had wrapped up that body. Remember when Lazarus was buried? They had him, had him all wrapped up. And Jesus told them to loose him and let him go. Amen. Jesus came out from the grave clothes and nobody had to release him. Lord. He came out. And you know what? He brought one thing out with him. The napkin that they had lovingly placed over his face. He brought that out. Why? Why? We're going to show something in just a few minutes. We're going to go back to the singers in just a minute, and then, we'll, then I've got a lot more to tell you about this. Jesus took the napkin that was on his face. He folded it all up, and he laid it in another place inside that tomb. I'll show you why in just a few minutes. Let's go to our singers.
the soldiers. I told you what happened inside the tomb. Now I'm going to tell you what's happening on the outside of the tomb. The, wi- the women are on their way down there. The soldiers are already there guarding the tomb. That thing was sealed with the power of Rome. All that Rome has, it was sealed. It's still kind of dark. But I see something about to happen. You bear with me just a few minutes. I see something in the heavens descending and coming this way. And the closer it gets, the brighter it gets. What's that? What's that? It's coming down where these soldiers are guarding the tomb. Brother Preacher, I believe that that angel of God turned on the lights and they could see him in his power and his glory. And I believe that that was one of the most frightening sights they had ever seen. (laughs) That angel came down to to the tomb and to the rock and to the seal. What does the angel think about the seal of Rome? The most powerful nation in the world. What does the angel think about? Broke the seal. What did the soldiers do? Buddy, they were scared to death. They had never seen anything like this. Now watch the angel as he pushes away the stone. Why was he pushing away the stone? Those women would have had no way to get in there. But the Lord provided the way. He rolled away the stone. Now soldiers of Rome, look. He got up there and sat on the stone. (laughs) Those soldiers were scared to death. You ever seen a grown man faint for fear? Well, I'm going to tell you what. Those soldiers fainted for fear. Looking upon that angel. It was the most fearful sight they had ever seen. And they just faded away. (coughs) I tell you what. When they recovered from their faint... They took off the other direction. I would too, wouldn't you, preacher? I would too. How do you do battle with what they had just seen? The stone is rolled away. The pathway is open. Jesus has got up. Now people are going to get to see the evidence that he is arisen. He is arisen. He is arisen. Uh Uh-oh, I hear the women. I hear the women. I hear them approaching. I hear them coming down the road. Let's go back there, singers.
I told you I heard, I hear the voice of the women. Bird Girls, bird. don't go away. Don't go away. Get another one here. I hear the voice of the women as they're getting very close to the tomb. They have wondered who is going to do this. Who's going to roll away the, to the stone? But they get there and the stone is rolled away. Praise the Lord. Who is going to do get permission from the guards for us to go in there? The guards have run away. So they looked down in there, and there were two in the tomb. In real shining garments. They didn't think much about that, did they? There's so many things that so, so overwhelmed them that they didn't consider that these two were in, in there in shining garments. What was making them shine? What was it? And they said, they said, he is not here. He is arisen. Go and tell the disciples that he goeth before them unto Galilee. The women, I think, they looked around. They saw that the body was gone. Grave clothes were still there. I think they were so overwhelmed and so shocked that they didn't look at a whole lot of things. They headed back to tell the disciples the message, He has arisen. Murray stayed behind. Murray Magdalene. She stayed behind and she saw, hey, you know who that was over there? She thought it was a gardener. She said, where have you taken him? You tell me where you've taken him, I'll go get the body and take it away. He said, he said to her, Murray, She realized that voice. Yes, she, did. she said, Master Rabona. She recognized that voice. And Jesus said, Touch me not, for I'm not yet ascended to the Father. Whew. Take a message down there. <laughs> I'm going to paraphrase this. Take a message down to the disciples that I have arisen. I said I was going to get up in three days. Yes, I have arisen. He had told her not to touch him. And she went down there to tell the disciples that she had seen him and that he had arisen. Well, all the disciples, all the disciples heard what she said, except, uh, and uh, they wondered in themselves what's going on. Peter and John decided to run down to the tomb. But that wasn't a walking trip, that was a running trip. They decided to run down to the tomb, and John was a little bit better shaped than Peter. I identify with Peter. I think I'd be the slow one, definitely would. Yeah, but they come down there and John looks into the tomb. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And Peter, although he was a little slower, he come right on and went right into the tomb. And he saw and he believed. He saw the grave clothes where they were, where they were supposed to be, and they were still there, but there was no body in it. And then he saw the napkin that had been put over the face of Jesus and that had been folded with love and put aside and he believed. 
He saw and he believed. This all happened early on Easter morning, a little over 2,000 years ago. My, my Savior got up from the dead. And because he lives, I can live also. Amen. He got up. Rome could not hold him. The seal of Rome meant nothing. Rome could not hold him. The guards that were there, they could not keep him in the tomb. The Lord. It was time for him to get up. And because he lives, I can live also. Amen. Carolyn, you got another song? You ready to have another one? Well, he, we're going to call him to preach now. Okay. Dave, hurry. Come on up. Hurry real quick. Now, no, come on. Hurry. Let's go. And I got some prayer requests. And then I'm going to turn that preacher loose. This service is probably different than any that you've ever seen come out of this station. But I felt today, I just, I look at those stars. We're in the middle of construction. And I looked at those stars and I looked at the darkness and I thought what it was 2,000 years ago. And buddy, I think I've done what the Lord told me to do. Now. Brian had surgery to re, uh, remove his appendix last week and had uh, complications with the kidneys. Things, are, things were getting better, but now has pneumonia in his left lung in the hospital in Kentucky. Lord, I come to you on behalf of Brian, Father. Would you watch over him and keep him? Lord, Brian, Brian is that Jar Star? Brian Star. Star. Lord, watch over Brian Starr, Father. Help him. Help him, Lord. Lord, this, this request came by faith. By faith, I deliver it to you. And by faith, I give you the praise and the glory for what you're going to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, I got another request here. Rhonda, her son died last fall, and his birthday is April the 9th. She is struggling with the grief. Our most kind and precious Heavenly Father, I come to you on behalf of Rhonda. Lord, would you comfort her? Would you comfort her? We put, we put her in your hands, Father. Comfort her and lift her up in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. amen. Go ahead. Yes, I want to wish everybody a happy Easter out there. And You know, the, Jesus died on that cross so that we may live, live forever. And I, and I hope that someday that I get to go up and see him and see all my loved ones that's already passed away in that valley up there in heaven. Well, I'm tired and so weary, but I must travel on till the Lord comes and calls, calls me away. Well, the morning is so bright, and the lamp is the light, and the night, night is as black as the sea. There will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me. Dear Lord, I pray there'll be no sadness, no sorrow, no trouble that I see. There will be peace in the valley for me. Well, the bear will be gentle and the wolf will be tame. And the lion shall lay down by the lamb, oh yes. And the beast from the wild will be led by a child. And I'll be changed, changed from this creature that I am. There will be peace 
in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me. Dear Lord, I pray there'll be no sadness, no sorrow, no trouble that I see. There will be peace in the valley for me. God bless all of you. Have a happy Easter. Amen. Amen. Very good. You did good, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I tell you what, we're going to ask that preacher to come on over here. Huh? Yes. I will bring the podium back. Ah. Oh. I enjoyed standing in the darkness, the Lord. telling about the light of the Lord. <laughs> okay, now I, I want, I'm going to do one thing, then we'll turn you loose. Okay. okay, you can see that the set is different. The set's going to be like, used like this today, and it'll be used like this tomorrow night. And then Tuesday morning, they'll start uh, installing the new set. All right? And I want to publicly thank a bunch of people. Okay, right there, there's Roger and Sarah, his wife. I, I appreciate you. Uh, they were here. They and Dick Haynes were here yesterday, and they were cleaning up the mess. After all the construction, believe me, there was a lot of mess. Oh, goodness. And I want to thank Brad Richardson. Brad... Uh, Brad did a wonderful job, but we turned out the stage and put the stage back in, and, and I, I want to thank uh, uh, Richard Stevens, uh, 84 years old, young fella, try to work with him, he'll work you to death. I tried, and Carolyn said he about killed me. Okay, so uh, I thank Richard for the help. Uh, Brett, uh, I thank um, Larry and Barb, uh, they did a good job, and uh, they helped here with the tear out. And I thank Linda and Laura because they, uh, one night after we were all gone, you can't realize how much stuff th there is when you start tearing out things. You can't realize what a mess you've got. And I thank them for their help. And uh, let's see, who else? Who am I forgetting, Carolyn? Help me. Oh, Carolyn. Carolyn's been sick all week, but one night she came in and helped. And I, I really appreciate that. Okay. Huh? And Jonathan. Jonathan was on vacation this week. No, he didn't plan it that way. They, uh, but uh, Jonathan came in one night. Although he was on vacation, he came in a night to work. And uh, who am I forgetting, Carolyn? Uh, okay, I appreciate... Okay, I, I, th huh? Appreciate I appreciate anybody I forgot. There's something about standing in front of the camera, you lose all the memory, it all goes. Okay, so I appreciate everybody that's worked. There has been hundreds of hours of work up to this point. The new scenery will start going in uh, Tuesday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay, come on, Brother Preacher. I love you, Brother Preacher. Love you, Brother. What, did you think things were any different when you got here tonight? Yeah. Or today? I didn't know it was leveled off like that. Huh? I didn't know it was leveled off like that. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Go ahead, Brother Preacher. Bring uh, some message. It's so good to be on the Lord's side. I enjoyed the good singing and each and everything was said and done. You know, uh, Dave, he left me off a, a starting point. And, uh, and why seek ye the living among the dead? Yeah, yeah. He's not here, but he's risen. I tell you, we were sitting in the region of shadow death, and there were no hope for us. But through Jesus are going to Calvary, he gave a, uh, us a lively hope in the Lord. He, I, I, I know sometimes I get stuttering and so on and so forth. He said, as long as a testator lives, it's not in force after they're dead. 
Now, the fullness of time that the gospel come, it was after the resurrection of Christ, after he ascended into heaven, and brothers got people got together and got to praying, and by the power of the Lord fell, and brother, they began to even set up on like fire upon their head. It was because of Calvary that he went to Calvary for your sin and my sin and for the sins of the whole world that we could have life and we could have it more abundantly through the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the Lord. You know when he's over in the Isle of Patmos and John the Revelator was on the Sabbath day and brother is in the spirit and the power of the Lord. And Jesus appeared to him, and his hair was white like wool, his eyes like flames of fire, and his feet, though it burned in a fiery furnace, and John, no doubt, he just looked him up and looked him down. He said, John, I was was dead. Behold, I'm alive forevermore. I've got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Because I live, you can live also. And after the death of Calvary, we have never had an opportunity and to have salvation in our heart. It's so good to know the Lord. And brother, listen, he's not here, but he's risen. They didn't know that Christ would be rose when they went down there. But they, they was going down there uh, uh, to dress, in other words, uh, fix up a dead man. But they didn't realize a scripture in the word of the Lord that he had done rose from the dead. I thought, my goodness, <laughs> he's not here dead, but he is risen. Now you get to thinking about how good God is. Went to Calvary for your sins and my sins and the sins of the whole world, that we could have the right to the tree of life when this life is wound to close. I'm not going to take up too much time. Uh, how Carl is going to say. Uh, I, I like to say this. Uh, Sometimes people are to think how good God is. You just think about it. If Jesus had not rose from the tomb, well, I wouldn't have got in. You wouldn't have got in. Your preaching would be in vain if he hadn't yes, risen. Yes. But he risen on the third and fourth in the morning. He rose victorious, death, hell, and the grave. He, he got the keys. You know, a lot of people, they don't understand. All was dead is his body. That's all. But his spirit, I, I feel like it moved into another body, and he went down and preached to them from back the days of Noah unto that time and offered them an opportunity. When he was crucified, uh, and them in the grave, they awoke. And they come out of the graves after his resurrection and appeared in the holy city. I tell you, we ought to be really thankful and proud that God opened up a way for you and me that we could have life and we could have it more abundantly. Now, I like this. He said, whom I will, let him come and take the water of life freely. That means the Jew. That means the Gentiles. That means a black man. That means a white man. That means everybody have a right to a tree of life. You said we didn't have the right to a tree of life. We didn't. We was outcast. But through the death of cross of Calvary, he said the church said come, the bride said come, let whomsoever will, let them come and take the water of life freely. A lot of people today, <laughs> they can't worship some people. Uh, you know, maybe their skin's a little bit different than ours. I tell you, God died for all people. I right. sins of the whole world that we could have a right to the tree of life. And this life is well and closed. I'm going to get out of the way. And, and I, I like to say this. I love the Lord. God has been so good to me. I think sometimes how good God is. He fixed the way and made a plan of salvation for you and me. We don't have to go to some high priest and pray. We go to high priest in heaven that we can go to him and take our sins. And he said, little children, if you sin, have a navigate with the Father, righteous, faithful, and just forgive your sins, and not for yours only, but for the sins of the whole world. If we err from the ways of truth, we can always take it to God.
and God will pardon us. So I, I love the Lord. I, I get to say sometimes, uh, there have been times that I went and, and uh, I, about this salvation, it's been so good. A lot of people, uh, they said, well, when you, uh, down in the uh, valley, they call it, uh, that's going through a hard thing and God is really a blessing you. No, that's when everybody, as I look at it, they're checking their life out. Have I done something other that I'm in this condition? Have I, have I hurt somebody? Have I done this? Have I done that? I tell you, that's when you're going through the valley. You put yourself on the examining board and you examine yourself and try it out very much and see if you really in the faith or not. Sometimes we might lose a little bit of faith and confidence. That's where we need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, help me to be overcomer. Help me, Lord, to be more humble and faithful on the death that I can hold my hands up towards heaven and praise the Lord. David done a good job. I think we ought to give David a good hand. Don't you? Come on. Praise the Lord. I, I love Brother David. Come on, Brother David. I'm going to turn it over to Dave. It's so good to be on the Lord's side. I just praise God for his many blessings. Preacher, I feel like I've been church today. Amen, brother. I feel like I've been church. Praise the Lord. And I, I kind of think that we didn't get any farther on this because I think that the Lord wanted us to use that black back there and the stars and realize how black everything was until Jesus got up. Come on, Carol. Come on over here. All right. Bless your heart. I'm glad that we all gave Jesus our attention today, but we need to give Jesus our attention 365 days a year Amen. and one for leap year. Keep him, get him in your heart, and keep him there. They pull the nails from his feet and his hands, and they lowered him down from that old cross. The only hope in a dying world seemed that all hope was lost. laid him in a borrowed tomb, rolled a stone against the door to the angel at hand. God gave his command, move the stone, and Jesus Then great. 
know what you know what the direction we're going now now this is only an intermediate uh all those sets over there and it'll start going in about tuesday okay and hopefully by next weekend uh the whole set's going to be there you're pretty anxious to see that aren't you enjoy she your day enjoy your family yes and uh if you know if you live alone you can always um maybe you've got a neighbor you can call uh -huh. But you can sure talk to the Lord. Okay, that's for sure. That's for sure. Now, tune in next week, same time, this same station. Okay? And you remember us all in prayer. And remember our workers. It's going to be doing a lot of work this week. And hopefully we're hoping to have everything completed by next weekend. In fact, Friday night's when it has to be completed. I'm sure we'll have a lot of details to Yes, in. yes. Okay, uh, we thank everybody that's helped us. God bless you. Uh, I want to say um, happy Easter to everybody. And remember what Easter's all about. Jesus got up. He came out of that tomb. And Jesus saves. Jesus saves.